boring warning. This could possibly be the most boring and longest video I've done so far, especially on the maintenance side of things, right? But if you want to know about um, changing your belt and also find out about things like clutches, uh, variators, rollers, sliders, possibly making your scooter go faster, then it's quite interesting, right? And the other thing is it's interesting if you are thinking about doing your own maintenance. This was a tough job for me, being a complete novice, and um, it's a little bit long-winded, right? And it's that bad that I thought, I'm not going to put it out there. And then I had a little think to myself, I thought, what's the purpose of the channel? The purpose of the channel is to record my um, journey in scootering, right? To document everything, including maintenance and rides and everything. And um, for you guys to follow the, follow the journey so that if you're on a similar path, at least you can learn from my mistakes, all right? And believe me, I've made a few clangers in this one, right? So it's worth watching just for the comedy value. Um, but two weeks ago, I knew nothing about rollers and sliders and variators. Um, I was clueless. And now at least I know the basics. I've tackled it and I'm pleased that I did it. And um, for that reason, I'm sharing the content so that other people can um, benefit from it, hopefully, at some point in the future as well. All right? If you don't like the video, if it's not for you, then please don't unsubscribe from the channel. Stay with us. We're going to have some amazing rides coming up in the spring and the summer. And um, if you do like the video, if you're one of the viewers that regularly watches my videos and you like the videos, but you've not yet subscribed, please subscribe because it helps the channel um, deliver the content to more people the way that YouTube works. All right. So the more subscribers, the more content we can uh, get out to more, more viewers. And that's the aim of the channel is just to help people and share my journey. All right. So guys, thanks for, for thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video, even though it is a little long-winded. All right, cheers. Okay, guys, welcome along. Um, so today I'm going to have a go at a job that I've been putting off. It's on the six thousand mile service schedule, and uh, it's the belt. All right, so it's on the schedule. Um, a couple of people have suggested that I should look at the the rollers, right? See if the rollers are worn, um, which are you know behind the variator. I know nothing about these things, but because it's not on the service schedule, I'm not going to bother with the rollers. I'm just going to do the belt, make sure uh, that the belt is done. And then, you know, my motto is if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And I think if the rollers were uh, in need of changing, then it would be giving me some sort of signal. Maybe it would be sh shuddering or juddering, uh, not very smooth. I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to do the belt. All right, so let's see how we get on. I'm just going to move the camera. So you can see down here, I am... Um, on the left hand side of the scooter right i've got the panel off i'm on the left hand side of the scooter so here we've got the air filter which we've already done okay and under here um if you haven't seen that video check out the air filter video it's dead straightforward under here we've got the casing which has got the um the clutch and the variator and the belt in here right so we're going to undo this and um i'm hoping this is going to be straightforward Okay, we've got an eight, eight millimeter socket. We've got an extension bar and I've got a little wrench here. Okay, a little ratchet. So it should be straightforward. Uh, tell you what we'll do, we'll lower the camera down and try and zoom in so we can see this. All right, bear with me. Okay, so you can see we've got one, uh, two, I think there's nine altogether. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now there are eight or nine. Let's give it a go. Okay. Just want to go in there. Yeah, straightforward. There we go, so I'm going to do the others. Might speed this part of the film up so you don't have to sit through this. But it should be straightforward. There's the second one. So, they're all off. And we should be able to pry this off. Um, if we've undone them all, let's have a look.
pretty tight guys I'm thinking there's something else that's holding it on um, now is it that one there I think it is there's another one there but actually slightly bigger um, yeah so that looks like a 10 mil or something so I'm just gonna get a different socket That's the one, okay. So let me show you this. There's another there's another one in, in here, right? Um can you see that? Just there. I think that one needs to come off as well. So that's like attaching the uh the air filter and the housing for the belt. Right. Let me see if we can get that. Oops. so that's a different size and um, slightly different than the others, a bit bigger okay so that's easy now what you'll notice when you look at the screws I'm just going to flip the camera around so we can see okay um, they're all similar that one there is shorter okay that one is shorter so there's two that are shorter and I've put them, I've laid them out there in the configuration that they came out, roughly, okay? So you've got one at the top there that's shorter, and you've got one down at the bottom. I'm guessing they're in the right positions because, um, oh, you know, I don't know if this belt has ever been done before or if the rollers have ever been done before, but um, I'm guessing that they've been, if they have been taken out before, they've been put back in the right place, but there's two of them that are smaller, so you need to check and make sure that when you take them out, um, you know where they're going back okay so I've undone all them we should be able to pry this off now okay let's have a go is it loose no it's not um what on earth is holding that on there I've got them all one two three I'm wondering do we need to take the, the air filter off at all why would that hold that on though? That isn't directly connected, I don't think. Is it? No, it's not. Yes. So guys, you see what I did there? Just use the screwdriver, big long screwdriver, put it down there, jammed it in against the uh, the solid metal part on there, we don't know what that part's called. Can you see where this is going? Bring the camera in. So all I did there was use this in here. Okay, you see my screwdriver going. I pried that along there. Put the end of the screwdriver down there and just leave it this way. And now you can see that the casing is coming off. Right, so we're good. Not damaged anything and we've got the casing loose. But boy, that's tight, right? That is tight. But now we've loosened it, we should be able to work it free. It feels a little tight. I'm wondering if it would have been easier with the, um, the air filter removed. Now here, you see this? You see under there? There's a little metal bracket there, right, that just hooks over uh, the top of the casing to hold it in place. So you've got to make sure that that metal bracket is just lifted up a little bit to allow this to uh, to come out. Okay. There we go. Something's in the way. Um, what is it in the way that's stopping that? 
just slide that with the, it's just angles, right? We'll get the angles right. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take off this, right? And then we're gonna have more room to lift it up. I think it's gonna be easier with this air filter cover off, right? Let's try it. Better way to spend a Saturday afternoon with tinkering and learning, right? So they're all the same size, so they're straightforward. I'll put them to one side. So take that off. And now does that give us a bit more room to get this out? Try this, see if we can make it a little easier to get this off. I'm going to try and undo this nut and uh, see if we can just get a little bit of movement on that bottom panel to create some space. Right. So I've no idea if this is what they want to do or not, but we shall try it. Now there's a knot on the back of it, so when I turn that, that stays. Hold the nut. It's a locking nut as well. It's very tight. There we go. Don't know if that's going to help or not. Let's see. Put that to one side. Yeah, yes, there we go. So just by loose, you see that? I Taking that nut and bolt out of the frame there, it just allows a little movement here with this bottom uh, floorboard just to allow the space. And there is the belt, all right? So let's have a look what else have we got. We've got a gasket there that looks a little bit loose or a bit old. So I've got to make sure that goes back on. In fact, I should have a gasket all the way around. I'm pretty sure, from what I've seen online, you should have some sort of paper gasket or some sort of sealant gasket around there. Um, it looks to have worn. So I'm not too sure about that. Okay, but let's see. There's our belt. So what we need to do is loosen this which isn't going to be easy. Take this off. Okay, so this is, um, this needs to come off and the belt sits inside there. So once we take this off, it should be easy. But the problem is when you turn this to undo it, this is going to move, right? Now the hack that I've seen online is to jam a wrench in here and then prop it against the metal frame so that it doesn't move around. So I'm going to try that. Okay, I'm going to put the camera back on the uh, tripod and then uh, yeah, let's have a go at this. So I need two wrenches, I need one to hold it still and I need one um, hmm, not going to be easy this one I don't think. Maybe we could use a long screwdriver to hold it still. Okay, so let me find the correct tools first. So that's the one. So that is 17 millimeters. 17 millimeter socket going on there. Okay. Uh, so how are we going to hold that rest, the rest of it still? Um, I'm thinking maybe. Do it. Don't want to break those um, those fins though, right? How about that? 
Laat maar doen. Zo, wat doen? Adjustable spanner on the fin. Just hope it doesn't break that there. When we try and turn it, but we'll give that a go very gently and see how it works. All right. Yeah. So we'll put that in there. Little extension bar. And then this on here. All right. And let's see how we do. That's moving. I try and hold it still. Yeah, that doesn't feel good. That's moving too much. Now I know there's probably special tools for this, right? But I haven't got them, and I'm seeing if I can do it with the minimum, the minimum tools. Bear with me. So, do we need to buy a special tool? And if we if we do, then what is the name of the tool? Right. Well, is there a, is there a hack that we can do? Which is what I'm trying right now. Something a little stronger, maybe. Hold everything in place. That might do it, guys. Look, I think I'm in. Don't want to break those fins, though, right? Because there's a lot of pressure pushing down now on that fin. Fast. Do we need an impact wrench? I wonder. Do we? I know some people have mentioned um, having an extension bar on the wrench to get more leverage, which seems right now a good idea. Snap the fin. Disaster. I thought that might happen, right? Ah. Is that going to affect the performance of the scoop? I wonder. So, guys, that's the end of the show for today because I'm not going to risk doing any more damage to that. Right? I'm not going to be able to undo that. So, what is the tool? I need to do some research, find the tool. Maybe we need to order a new plate now that I've damaged the fin. Um, yikes, not doing the belt today, guys. See what's happened, that snapped off. And you can see down there. It's that one there, that's where it snapped off. Yeah. So I've got a problem. I need to order a new one of those. And um or do I? Right, will it work as it is now? There's a little bit missing. Is it really going to affect the performance? Or is it going to cause more damage? Right. And I've still not got the belt on because that nut is tight, guys. So I need to do some research, find out what tool I need there in order to enable uh, that to stay still while we undo the nut without causing damage. Alright. So guys, that's definitely how not to do it. Don't try and bodge it with a spanner or a screwdriver holding the uh, the turning part still. All right, I'll save it for another day. So, guys, how disappointed was I yesterday, last night, after breaking my royal alloy, snapping the fin off the variator plate, and um, not happy at all. Right, but it's my own stupid fault. Trying to cut corners and trying to be, uh, you know. Just not using the correct tools but at the end of the day i'm an amateur and that's what this channel is about it's about me having a go seeing if i can do it um with the tools that i've got or if i need to invest in any of the tools so guess what did a little bit of research right and i discovered that the tool that i needed was this it's called the y tool the prongs go onto the variator plate on the outside and that's what those little holes on the uh, on the plate are for the prongs this end you can just lodge it against the frame um, and that's going to stop it moving around, right? So that's good. So that, £10 off Amazon, ordered it at 9 o'clock last night. It was delivered this afternoon. 
uh, jobs are good one. They're probably a borrowed one, but I've kept it. Uh, sorry, sorry, I've ordered it for my own use. And then um, I've got it for future use as well. All right, so a good investment in the toolkit and an absolute bargain as well. Um, I've also got with me today torque wrench to generate a little bit more leverage. It's a bit bigger, a bit meatier. We'll see if that gets a nut free. Okay, if it doesn't, then we're going to need a big breaker bar or maybe even an impact wrench. Try and borrow or beg or steal an impact wrench. Not steal, but you know what I mean. Um, so that's an option, right? Now, what else have I discovered through my research? Um, should we ride the scooter with a snapped fin? The general answer is no, because you're going to end up causing it more damage. The plate will be unbalanced and it can cause vibration. Vibration can then uh, transmit to the clutch and eventually the crankshaft causing permanent and major damage. So not a good idea. I'm not even going to do that. The other thing that I read was you can snap off the opposite fin to balance the plate. Not going to do that. I'm not going to start messing about uh, doing things like that. I'll just order a new one. So yeah, went on Royal Alloy UK. They had one in stock, which was amazing. And um, according to the website, there's one left. That'll be here in a couple of days. So got really lucky there. Uh, but in the meantime, can't get out on the scoot. And um, I'm in dock, right? So no scooting for a couple of days. What else have I learned? Well, I watched a guy uh, on YouTube last night and he took the belt off without taking the outside plate off, right? Amazing. And he was saying that a lot of people frown on this technique, shouldn't be done, but he said he's done it time and time again with no ill effect. And basically what he did was grab the clutch plates at the back, squeeze them with his fingers um, so that the belt then dropped down a little bit into the, uh, into the gap around the pulley. And that causes slack in the belt and you can then peel the belt off without even taking the plate off. Now, for my own educational purposes and for the sake of the channel, I'm gonna have a go at it, right? I've got nothing to lose. See if I can get the belt off without taking the plate off, uh, just for fun. And then if we can do that, I'm gonna take the plate off anyway, because we've got to replace it with a new one, all right? But let's give it a try. I'm gonna reposition the camera and we'll see how we get on. So, apparently, if I get my fingers in there, okay, pull that plate towards me with my fingers, then the belt here is going to drop into this gap where it's going to be creating a little bit more slack on the belt and we can peel it off. So I'm going to give it a try. Right, never tried this, never done it. Just watched the video and uh, I liked it. Let's see if it's easy. Now he did stress it, he needs strong hands. There we go. Right, so that's creating a little bit of slack. Can you see that? I just don't know whether I can do it with two hands. This Royal Alloy is a little different now. He had hands on. Um, each side, but I can only get in on one side. Maybe we can get down there. Pull that in. Need to drop that down into the gap. There we go. There we go. Right, now that belt is in tight against the pulley, and that has created the slack there. Look at all that slack. I'm holding both sides of the belt. And now, can we peel that off? And get it free. Let's have a go. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be enough clearance to actually get the belt out. Um, once it's down there. So I'm not convinced by his method, guys. Not really. I don't think that's going to work. It's not as easy as he made, as he made it look in his video, that's for sure. Uh, and I think these Royal Allies are maybe built a little differently with um, less clearance to get the belt out from around the uh, front plates. All right, so try it if you like, but not for me. I'll wait until we can get that off. All right, so let's have a bash. Let's see if we can undo this plate with our new Y tool. Okay. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see that. I've got the Y tool on here. I've got the prongs into the uh, the outside plate in the, in the correct holes to keep it still. And then that is jammed against the frame, which isn't gonna move, right? So hopefully we're good to go. Okay. We'll get the wrench and we're gonna give it some welly guys. Let's see how we do. Not hopeful with this, doesn't feel particularly strong. We've got 
leverage. Point the right way. Not budging at all. Not budging at all. Right, without the extension bar, just so it feels a bit more solid. Not going to damage it. Y bar is in. Socket is on. First aid kit in here. Yes. Yes. Yes, joy of joys, guys. I've got it. Oh my goodness. That is like ecstasy. So, the angle that I was holding the wrench made a difference when I was directly above it and it was nice and uh, snug and it wasn't actually coming out at all. Then it was great. Okay. Done it, cracked it. So all we need now, guys, is a new plate from Royal Alloy UK, which should be delivered in the next few days, and then the job will be a good one. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Take that off there. It's not quite off yet, I'm just going to take that wire tool out. Guys, check that out. Blood, sweat, and tears, right? All in the space of two days. Get that off there now. Definitely couldn't have done this with the air with the uh, air filter cover on. It's a too tricky be in the way. For this job is definitely easier with the uh, air tool with the air tool the air filter cover off. Ta da! Got it off. Plate off. Cool. All right. Belt off. Uh, he says, "Can we get that belt off? How do you get that off?" <clears throat> wow. How do we get that off? How do we get the belt off? Do we just pull it through? No. We need to loosen that clutch to get the belt free. Uh -huh, not so easy after all, guys. Look. Can you see that, guys? There's like hardly any clearance between the metal casing um, and the plates to get the belt free. So, what is the technique we use to try and get that free? Also, guys, look at the uh, the seal. It's just perished around here, so I'm going to replace that with a little bit of, uh, um, you know, the uh, liquid sealant, again, gasket, liquid gasket that you put on there and it cures. Um, but yeah, how do we get this loosened off? I think the answer is getting an impact wrench on there, loosening that off a little bit. Pull everything this way, create some slack and slide the belt out. I think that's the only way. I could be wrong. Brainwave, guys. I'm guessing that's what the big prongs are for on the Y tool. All right, so we can get them in there. We can have one going one way, one going the other way. So we've got counter force, and that should do the job. Hopefully, it's not going to cause any damage. Get an angle. Have a 
we go. So that's holding it steady. Get a little leverage going. Are we on the right track here, guys? Mm, not sure. Nope, it's not moving. Mm. Well, it can, it will cause damage if you do it with any more intensity. We're back, different day, different tool for the job, right? I'm gonna try and get that clutch off and um, I've got this impact wrench, cordless, rechargeable, pretty meaty. Um, if you want to know more about this, I'm going to do a separate review on it, so you can look out for that. And um, hopefully this is going to get that, um, that nut undone off the clutch. No problem at all, all right? I've also got a new socket here, a 17mm socket, so that's going to go on there. There we go. Okay, let's see if it whizzes that off, no problem at all. Just going to lower the camera down. Let's have a look. Now, I don't really see how this is going to work without it spinning round, but I think that's what the impact wrench does. Nothing. Hmm. Well, guys, I've tried it. I've seen people do it on YouTube where they just literally, they don't hold the clutch, stop it spinning. They just use one of these and it comes undone. So I thought that would work, but no. And um, I've even tried it. I'm gonna move the camera down here. I've even tried it uh, using the Y tool to hold the clutch and the impact wrench and still doesn't work, okay? Um, and I've even gone back for about an hour Whoops, sorry, I've not put it on the video because um, it would have been a hell of a long video, but for about an hour I've been trying with the uh, the Y tool and the impact wrench with the 17mm socket on going opposing ways. Nothing, I can't shift it. I've got a little bit of WD-40 on there, left it for a few minutes, tried again, nothing. I've even tried putting my full weight on the bike by sitting on it in yeah, reverse putting my full weight on it to stop it moving around because when, you, when you're when you cranking this, it lifts a little bit, starts tipping forwards. So I've been doing everything I can and still nothing. I cannot shift that nut, right? I'm just holding the clutch on. So I went on YouTube, saw a guy using a, um, a strap wrench, right? To actually hold the, uh, the clutch, a strap wrench, which I've not got, but he was holding that and he was using uh, the impact wrench. So I had a brainwave, guys. Check this out. I had a brainwave. And I tried using just a normal leather belt, right? A normal leather belt. Now, wrap the belt around the clutch, feed it through the buckle. This is my own idea, guys. I've not seen this anywhere. I just figured it out. I'm quite pleased with myself today, right? Put it on there. I brought the buckle round that side and pulled it tight, okay? And then bring it back. I hooked it around the stand, around the center stand there, and pulled it, and just tightened that up. So that, in theory now, is not gonna move, okay? Impact wrench. Make sure we're going the right way. So that, I'm holding the, the belt down here. You can see that, holding the belt. That's gonna hold the clutch still. A lot easier than trying to use that Y tool. There we go. Woohoo! Guys, impact wrench works, but not on its own. You've got to hold the clutch plate or the clutch dish, should we call it. And then, there we go, guys, look. Perfect. Now we can take the belt off and um, need to take the whole clutch assembly off, but I don't want to 
all those springs to fly everywhere. Let's have a look. Never done this before. Guys, check it out. Oh, clutch is off. And the belt is off. Okay. So now the new belt will sit in there. Let's pull it out. Yep, that's the old belt. That's the clutch assembly there, which is gonna go back on. Um so just comparing the old belt with the new belt. Are they the same? Uh, yeah, they look the same. And to be honest, the old belt has got, um, you can see, uh, very smooth, right? Very smooth there. It's worn a little bit compared with the new belt where you can see um, there's a more pronounced pattern on the surface of the belt there, you see that? So a little extra grip maybe. And that's the old one, which is a little worn. You can still see um, the pattern ever so slightly, but very, very worn. And when we took that, um, cover off a lot of dust in there like rubber dust so that needs a good clean i'm going to clean that down i'm going to clean the case down and um i guess that's a good indicator right when you take that cover off you can see um when you take that cover off you can see how much dust is in there how much rubber dust how much the belt is wearing right so if it was brand new there'd be hardly any dust if it was worn i'm guessing there'd be a lot more dust and debris in there um as the belt wears all right so i'm going to give that clean down and then all we need to do now is wait for the new, um, new one of these, okay, with the new, um, whoops, the new thing on there, that's a little washer that just sits in there. And then we're good to go, we can get the new belt back in and uh, put it all back together and uh, we'll be out on the road again. But yeah, I thought that was quite clever with using the belt instead of a... A strap tool instead of spending money just use a good strong leather belt uh, to get that off okay oh the other thing as well this belt not that one that's the old one this belt um i think in a previous video i said i bought it as part of a service kit i actually didn't i bought this directly on its own from the royal alloy um uk website okay so it is a genuine royal alloy supplied belt um Bando VS belt, that's the one that Royal Alloy supply. I don't know whether that's a good make or not, but that's the one that they're supplying as the official Royal Alloy belt, okay? Um, so guys, just need to wait for that plate and we can crack on. Okay guys, so it's two weeks on, um, just short of two weeks, 13 days since I uh, ordered the replacement uh, plate with the fins on, I think it's called the drive plate that just sits in front of the variator. Ordered a new one from royalalloy.co.uk uh, Moto GB, nearly two weeks on, still not received it. So absolutely shocking service from them. Uh, I know they've got a part shortage due to um, Brexit and things being held up at ports and all that carry on. And I know that's the same for a lot of industries, but just two weeks, have no notification to say that it's been dispatched or it's in progress. Um, nothing from customer services. So really poor show. And I think unless they get their act together fairly soon, then uh, they're going to be losing a lot of the, um, you know, potential market really. It's, it's not good service at all from Royal Alloy in terms of parts at the moment. Let's hope that improves in the future. So what I've done is I've gone on eBay and I ordered an aftermarket part. Now this is a full variator kit with rollers uh, and the faceplate as well, but I only need the faceplate, okay? Which means I'm gonna have some spares. Now, this is from a company called VMP. Okay, have a look at them on eBay. And they do lots of uh, aftermarket parts for scoops and bikes. And I think, you know, there's a good chance that they'll fill the gaps that Royal Alloy are failing to, uh, to fill at the moment. Hopefully it's of the same quality and it's an identical uh, part, aftermarket. So we've got the full variator kit there. Oops. We've got the boss. We've got the faceplate, which is the part I need. Okay. And we've got the variator here with the ramp, uh, I don't know if it's called the ramp, um, or they're called the ramps, and we've got the rollers there, right? So all the bits and pieces in there that we need. But all of that is gonna be spare. Now, at the start of this video, oops, put that back in there, I did say that I didn't think I was gonna change the rollers, right? Because it didn't need it. It's not on the service schedule. And 
Um, I've changed my mind. Okay, what I'm going to do is put these in Dr. Pulley's sliders, okay, instead of rollers. So I'm going to do a separate video on these and um, including a little road test to see if it increases the performance. All right, so have a look out for that separate video sliders instead of rollers. All right, that's what I'm, I'm veering towards. Um, so I'll do a separate video on that. Okay, so the job today is just to get them in and um, get the variator and the belt back on, and then we can get out and road test it. Okay, so what do we need to do? I'm going to bring the camera in first of all. Let's have a look. Okay, so down here you can see we've got the, uh, the old variator here. Okay, and the faceplate sits on there, the drive, drive face. I think they call that bit, okay? And the belt sits in between those two plates. So I'm just gonna remove this. Inside this, we've got the, um, we've got the rollers, okay? So the whole thing comes off, whoops. We've got the variator, okay, which is in two parts. You've got like a backing plate and a front plate, and there's all the rollers there that are loose, all right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna reuse this we're going to reuse the backing plate. I'm going to keep the other ones as spares and I'm going to put the new um, Dr. Pulley sliders in instead of these old rollers, which actually look okay, I think. I don't think there's any uh, wear on them. They look all right. I'm no expert, but they look okay. But I'm going to try it with um, the sliders, okay? As I say, I'm going to do a separate video on putting the sliders in and um, doing a road test and see if it increases the performance. Okay, so now you can see a bit clearer. You've got the spindle there. Okay, and I've got down here the variator with um, all the sliders in there ready to go. Okay, just make sure they're all seated correctly. And then I'm going to put the backing plate on, like so. Hold it with my fingers so everything doesn't fall apart. And then just slide the whole thing onto the spindle. And it should slide on fairly easily with the boss going right and deep. Okay. And then the face plate just sits on there. Oops. That's a little washer that needs to go on there. The belt goes in between these two plates. And um, the next job now, before we actually put that on and tighten it up, is, I believe, we need to just take this clutch off and get the belt fitted to the clutch. All right, so I'm just going to put that knot on there just so I wouldn't lose it, the knot in the washer. Take the clutch housing off. Take the clutch off. And now we're going to try and put the belt in here, okay, and then put the whole thing on. And you see how filthy this is here? I'm going to give that a little clean down with a brush and just give it a wipe down. Um, no chemicals or anything, just give it a little brush down. See if we can get some of that rubber dust off, okay. Okay, guys, so you'll see here I've got the, uh, the two belts, right? I've got the old one and the new one. And they're both Bando belts, which are supplied by Royal Aloe. Now, I've done a little bit of research, and these Bando belts are um, quite a good brand. Um, some of the kits that they supply um, in these, you know, these variator kits, they have what's called a Gates belt. And I've done some research, the Bando belt is considered as good, if not better, than the Gates belt. Okay, I don't know, but what do you think? Uh, if you've got any experience, put it in the comments below. But yeah, apparently the Bando is quite a good belt. When you hold these together, the old one and the new one, you'll see that probably can't see that but the new one is about a millimeter wider okay and it's also got this white marking around the edge whereas the old one is very worn there okay and that's obviously wear and tear as it wears it wears the sides down a little bit and it wears the teeth down a little bit as well um so the new one should give us a little bit more oomph hopefully all right so the next job now is to try and get the belt in between clutch plates okay so that we can put it on and seat it right and apparently as well when we put the belt on we need to make sure that the writing on the belt is readable so it's facing towards you it's readable if it's the other way then I think it's the wrong way whether that makes any difference or not I don't know but that's what I've read online so that's what I'm going to do all right so we're going to try and get that onto the clutch I'm not sure if it's easier to do off the bike or on the bike right We'll try and do it off the bike first. So I need to pull and turn the plates and at the same time try, try and stuff that in so that it's seated right down on the pulley, which isn't easy. And 
maybe there was some sort of clamp here, I think. It's not easy to get that in. So I'm going to kneel on it so I can push it that way. And I'm going to lift the plate. See that? So I've got that on fully deep there, you see that? I'm gonna slide that back in there. Now the trick I'm guessing is to keep it firmly seated in there, whilst we loop that round there, so that the belt, so that the belt doesn't obstruct um, the spindle here. Okay. So I'm going to keep that slack there, pop that on there. That's now seated correctly. Washer on. Yep. Nut on. Get that tightened up before we create any slack in the other end, okay, in the clutch end. So that it's not obstructing it. And that sits firmly in there. If I do even span it out, I just want to let that go. If I let that go, is it going to go? Get the spanner. Socket. 17 mil socket. There, guys, got the socket. On there. Now, in the manual, in the Royal Allen manual, it doesn't tell you what the torque settings need to be on these, these nuts, right? So what I'm going to do is get them on, and then uh, I've read online that 30 pound foot is the correct setting. Okay. Just looking for the washer that's fallen off the clutch plate. This is what happens guys, look, these little things. There it is, you lose the washer, and things take extra time, so I'm gonna pop that on there. And before we tighten them up fully, just make sure everything's rotating all right. Tighten that up. Tighten this up a little bit. I'm kind of nervous and anxious to see whether I've done this right, okay? So now I believe we have to just jump that around a little bit so it seats correctly. Okay guys, so I've set the torque wrench, um, another Amazon purchase, it wasn't much, it was about 20 quid. Um, been coming useful for lots of jobs, I've set it to 30 pound feet, right, which I believe is the right setting um, for these nuts, but I'm not sure, that's what I want to go with anyway. Okay, so it's a 70 millimeter socket, I'm going to hold that. Wrong way. So we have to turn that until we hear a click. Um, now I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to use the old belt to hold it. Let's see if this works. I could use the Y tool, right? But yeah, that's not going to hold it. I'll try it with the Y tool. Now you could use the impact wrench, but. So if you use the impact wrench, you might strip um, the thread on the spindle, which I definitely don't want to do. Now that feels tight. I can't get it any tighter manually. Yeah, I haven't heard the click. Right. Um, that one 
same thing. You got the wire tool in there to hold it. Pop that into the spindles. Click. Job done. So you can get the same with this. Yeah, the back's just tipping a little bit there. I need to put my weight on it. I think that's tight enough. I'm gonna go with. Okay guys, it's the moment of truth. Um, put the belt on, got everything in place. And um, I think I've tightened it up sufficiently. So I'm gonna turn on the engine and we'll see what happens. All right, a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous, but hopefully we're good. Okay, guys, so I'm not expert, but I think that's okay, right? You saw the belt moving up and down, like uh, widening and narrowing, and um, seems to be okay. I guess what we need to do now is put everything back together, put the casings on, and um, give it a little road test. Really intrigued to see if these Dr. Pulley sliders make a difference to the rollers. Um, the belt seems okay, though. Look at that now, it's got tension in it now. Now it's seated correctly, and it's had a few rotations. So guys, I think we're good. I'm just going to tighten that up again, just to make sure I can get that one any tighter. Um, in fact, I'm almost tempted to undo this one and just tighten it with the impact wrench a little bit. In fact, let's get the impact wrench on it. Let's see if we can just whiz that off and tighten it up again. And then we know it's done. So they say, just be very careful when you're doing um, impact wrench on these. tool or the belts on there I think. There we go. Right so undo. It's gonna tighten it up a little but not too much. Like very small. There we go. I think that'll be all right. I think that'll be tight enough. Okay and we're good to go guys. That is the old um, gasket, which was around the edge of the, uh, the crank casing. Okay, and it was along with all these edges here. So Royal Alloy have not got one in stock. So I'm gonna have a go with this, right? High temperature black gasket maker. I'm just gonna smear that around the edge, just because I don't fancy putting that back on uh, with no gasket whatsoever. And I think a little bit of this will just stop the ingress of uh, dirt and rainwater and so on, all right? So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to smear it around. I'm going to put some latex gloves on, smear it around, let it cure for about 15 minutes, and then stick it back on and bolt it back on. All right, job should be good. Okay, so I've given that a clean up, and you can see I've just put a very thin smear of the uh, the gasket maker around the edge. So let it cure for about 15 minutes, and now it's going to go back on, and um, we can get out and give it a test ride. So I'm going to make sure that when we put this back on now, I'm going to do it as carefully as possible. 
we don't get them all over the place, which is not easy. Okay guys, so I managed to slide the crankcase back on, a little bit fiddly. Um, just remember when you do that, there's a little clip here, you've got to make sure that clip seats correctly. The other thing to remember is, when you're putting these bolts back in, uh, there's two that are shorter than the other, right? So there's two shorter ones, and the short ones are located... Um, it's actually fairly obvious when you look where the short ones should go. Here, so that's like one back from where the clip is here. And on the corresponding one underneath, you've got a short one as well. All the others are the de deep ones that go a little bit deeper, okay? So I'm just going to pop all them back in. Um, I had a slight mishap, just as I was putting the, um, the crankcase back on. You can see I just held the, um, the plastic panel here with my thumb. And it actually snapped off, and that's where the, um, the side panel screws in. Is one of the three fixings for the side panel so the plastic there is actually sheared off and um, that's going to cause me a little problem i think right when i put the side panel back on you can see it was just sheared off there okay so not ideal and um, not sure how i'm going to fix that but we'll get around to it in due course so that's the first little problem i've had plastic panels maybe it's gone a bit brittle and um, maybe i applied a little leverage somewhere along the way and it's weakened it or maybe it was going to go anyway who knows uh, but not not happy about that. Okay, let's get these back on. Lift a little bit onto that. We're good. Impact wrench. Okay, guys, we're good. Ready to put the panel back on and let's hit the road.